Because every household needs an LPG that can keep up with a bossing ng kusina, we bring you Brentgas, the LPG specialist at your service, on your demand. Experience service na may malasakit whenever you order and enjoy dependable delivery service, consistent product quality, and tank integrity. Brent Gas also offers opportunities to OFWs and Filipino entrepreneurs to enrich their lives through its competitive franchise offer. Brent Gas, LPG specialists at your service. For any LPG related concerns or franchise, call or visit your nearest Brent Gas store or branch. A revolution in air purifying. An air purifier that gives two-way of air purifying system. Passive filtration through filters. How does each filter work? Filter Deodorizing Filter Get the filter This is one of a kind sharp technology able to release positive and negative ions, same ions that occur in nature. It deactivates airborne mold and suppresses activity of adhering viruses, bacteria and allergen through the dispersed ions in the air. actively attach and break down the air pollutants. Faster airflow at 20 degree angle. Collects dust at lower levels in the room for more effective cleaning. Plasma cluster can reduce static electricity and it can thus prevent dust from attaching to walls and other surfaces.
The moment our generation realized the gravity of the pandemic situation, everyone has set their sight on the emergence of a vaccine that will provide a permanent solution to the widespread disruption of our life and livelihood due to COVID-19. This is how the anti-COVID-19 vaccine and the promise of achieving herd immunity quickly became the rallying point of every nation all over the world. This is what drives our own consolidated vaccination program in Bataan. We aim to safely achieve herd immunity against COVID-19 by vaccinating a substantial proportion of our population successfully, which can subsequently lower the overall amount of coronavirus that is able to spread in the province. As a result, even the very young vulnerable group can be kept safe and protected from the disease, ensure the health and protection of every Bataenio, and provide a lasting solution to the problem of the pandemic. Let me walk you through some of the initiatives that we have been effectively implementing. Because the vaccine is seen as the catalyst in the overall solution of the pandemic problem, the provincial government has ramped up its consolidated vaccination program and continues to maximize its resources to make sure that every eligible Bataenyo would be inoculated with the hope of achieving herd immunity in the province. Bataan will take part in the procurement of vaccines outside of the initiative of the national government by sourcing donations from the private sector. The vaccine rollout in Bataan through the management of Provincial Health Office, PHO, is proceeding as planned as every dose delivered is received by an eligible member of a specific priority group at any given time. A perfect example of this is the focused vaccination rollout at the Bataan Provincial Jail wherein eligible persons deprived of liberty were vaccinated. Currently, residents of the DOH-run Bataan Treatment and Rehabilitation Center are awaiting their vaccines. This is the latest count of those who have been vaccinated, including total deliveries of vaccines to the province. Bataan's cold chain facility, located at the Bataan People's Center, which also serves as the province's centralized vaccination site, is up and running and able to receive and store any brand of vaccine including those that require meticulous handling and storage. On top of that, satellite vaccination sites were established in all 11 towns and in the city as the provincial government of Bataan continues to partner with the public and private sector in identifying other strategic locations to serve as inoculation sites for the ease and comfort of the people. Bataan utilizes an efficient QR code system for online, offline, and walk-in registration that helps speed up vaccination process. Moreover, it has recognized early on that the utmost significance of getting the message across the people would bring results beneficial for all. When the lines of communication between the government and the people are open, cooperation naturally ensues. Amplifying the importance of vaccines in the community, risk communications were intensified and various media channels were utilized to dismiss any misinformation and disinformation against the vaccine. This kind of campaign ultimately addressed vaccine hesitancy 
and continuously promotes partnership between the LGU and the barangay down to its constituents. Bataan is a veritable showcase of this kind of partnership and how it could avail much. Strategic public-private partnerships have been harnessed and strengthened in the province since day one of the pandemic and it has sustained our efforts, policies, and programs to combat COVID-19. The heart of it is a symbiotic relationship where everyone shares and augments what the other may be lacking in resources. Despite the challenges of the pandemic, we remain steadfast in our shared aspiration, united towards one goal, one vision for one Bataan. po ay nakikiisa sa pagtataguyod ng isang pamayanang malayo sa banta ng COVID-19. Marami po sa atin ang nahinto ang buhay at hanap buhay dahilan sa pandemya. Batid ko rin po ang hirap ng kalooban nararamdaman ng bawat isa. At narito na po ang mga baksin at buo ang ating pag-asang makamit ang tinatawag na herd immunity. Vaccination is the solution. Marami pa din sa ating mga kababayan ang maraming agam-agam. Maraming tanong. Marami rin pa rin uh, naniniwala sa mga haka-haka at mga sabi-sabi. Kaya nga po ako ay natutuwa na merong talakayan tungkol sa usapin ng vaccine hesitancy sa ating bansa. Magandang maunawaan natin ang epekto ng bakuna sa ating pong personal na buhay at sa ating buhay Pamayanan. Ang pamahalaang panlaliwigan po ng Bulacan sa pangunan ng inyong lingkod, Gobernador Daniel Ramirez Fernando ay katuwang ng Provincial Health Office at ng Department of Health sa programa ng mabilis, ligtas at mabisang pagbabakuna. Hangad natin na lubos na maunawaan ng ating mga kababayan ang kahalagahan po ng pagbabakuna upang tuluyan ng masugpo ang pandemya. Layunin din natin na mabakunahan na ang lahat sa ating target population upang maabot natin ang inaasam na herd immunity. Sa katunayan po ay patuloy pa rin ang ating ginagawang accelerated vaccine rollout. Ikinagagalap ko pong ibahagi sa inyo na as of June 16, 2021, Nakapagbakuna na po tayo ng mahigit 208,000 doses Kung saan mahigit 161,000 ang nabakunahan natin ng first dose At nasa 46,000 naman po ang nakakumpleto na po ng kanilang pangalawang dose ng bakuna Sa pagdating po ng higit na mas maraming bakuna ay mas mabilis po ang ating magiging rollout. Patuloy din po ang ating pagkapatupad ng pagsunod sa mga inilatag ng mga health protocols katulad po ba ng social distancing at pagsusuot po ng mga face mask at face shield. Hinihikahit ko po ang iba pang LGUs, private sectors at ang ating mga kababayan na magkaroon ng mas marami pang talakayan tungkol po sa vaccination upang magkaroon ng tamang kaalaman ang publiko sa magandang maidudulot nito sa pagsugpo ng COVID-19 o itong pandemyang ito. Natutuwa po akong ibalita. Alam niyo po, bumaba ng halos 43% ang mga COVID-19 cases natin sa lalamigin ng Bulacan dahil sa pagsusumikap po nating lahat. Malaking tulong po ang pagkakaroon ng bakuna sa tagumpay nating ito. Maraming salamat po at uh, lagi tayong mag-ingat. Sundin po natin ang mga health protocols at patuloy pa din tayong manalangin sa ating dakilang lumika na basbasa ng ating pagsisikap upang tuluyan na pong mawala ang salot, ang salot ng COVID-19 
sa ating bansa at sa buong mundo. Maraming, maraming salamat po. Isa pong magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Una sa lahat, nagpapasalamat po ako sa Pharmaceutical Healthcare and Association of the Philippines sa lahat po ng mga nanonood sa invitasyon niyo sa akin uh, bilang mayor ng Dabupan City upang magbigay linaw sa vaccination program po ng city at ano po ang aming mga ginagawa para ma-combat ang vaccination hesitancy. Una sa lahat dito po sa Dabupan City, we are very proud to say that we are one of the first LGUs in the Philippines or perhaps the first LG in the Philippines to establish a non-hospital vaccination center dito po sa aming Dagupan City People's Asodome. For the last few months, we have been continuously vaccinating uh, different um, Dagupenos and even non-residents who are working in Dagupan City. Kabilang na po dito siyempre yung mga under category A1, A2, A3 at ngayon po pati na rin po ang A4. To date, we have administered more than 21,000 vaccines and we are also very proud to say na ang percentage po ng fully vaccinated vis-a-vis -vis the population of Dagupan City ay nasa 4.7%. Compared po sa national average natin na 1.3% fully vaccinated Filipinos nationwide. In terms of vaccination hesitancy naman po, naniniwala po ako that the best way to combat this is through word of mouth. Ibig sabihin po, yung pong mga kababayan natin na nabakunahan na under A1, A2, A3, A4, sila po dapat ang manguna na magsabi kung ano po ang advantages of being fully vaccinated. They should spread the word and this message to their colleagues, their friends, and even loved ones to encourage them to be vaccinated and in order for them to be protected against COVID-19. In addition, Dagupan City is also adopting perhaps an incentive program like other LGUs para po mas maingganyo pang ibang mga dagupenyos na magpabakuna. Number three, we are continuously spreading the message through social media and through media interviews of the advantages of being vaccinated. Number four, we're also always asking the national government to increase their marketing in terms of convincing people against vaccination hesitancy. The truth is and the facts are very, very simple. Vaccines do work regardless of brand and regardless of where they come from. So, dapat lang po na ang sambayan ng Pilipino should take advantage of this opportunity because one, it is given for free. Number two, it is administered for free. Kasama na rin po dyan yung mga side effects monitoring and other fringe benefits with the vaccination. So, sana po nalinawan po kayo sa aking mixing talumpati regarding vaccination sa Dagupan City and what we are doing to combat vaccination hesitancy. Once again, I would like to thank the PHAP for this wonderful opportunity. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo and may you all have a good day. God bless and stay safe. To our distinguished guests and speakers. Good morning to the team of Philippines Graphic, Business Mirror, and the other organizers for coming out with a very relevant activity such as this. A wise man once said, A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. When I think of vaccine hesitancy, this is what comes to mind. Common sense dictates that the vaccine is the ultimate solution to this pandemic. However, there are large number of Filipinos who believe otherwise due to little or lack of knowledge. During the initial survey we have done, during the height of the pandemic, the results showed 25% vaccine acceptance. Many were scared, 
mostly because of misinformation from social media sites and conspiracy theories. Because of this, something had to be done. We began by coming up with a catchy name for our program. One that would have easy recall and evoke hope. Back to the Future. A wordplay on a popular movie title was chosen as a way to connect the vaccination program as the way to a better future. The name went viral as social media launched onto it. Even naming it as the unofficial winner of vaccination program names. It gave a good recall to the community. This was a good start. However, our main challenge is how to provide Paseños with the right information and avoid fake and wrong news. We used IECs and communicated this through various communication methods. Barangay Public Address System, flyers, tarpaulins, digital billboards, and social media. As part of our education campaign program, we have organized town hall meetings with our stakeholders because we know that our LGU leaders will be the vaccine ambassadors of their respective community. Role modeling during this time was also important. If the people see that their leaders in the LGU are taking the vaccine without hesitancy, they will follow suit. I had COVID and yet I was very careful, but it still hit me. There is a 5% chance of getting infected even if you had all the precautions. It is the vaccine that would somehow help complete the protection that one needs together with the safety protocols. We have set up hotline numbers dedicated exclusively for COVID-19 related concerns. We continuously share information about the safety and efficacy of the vaccines. Even our senior citizens shared their experiences to encourage our community to get vaccinated through short testimonial videos. Sa mga senior citizen na kagaya po, magpabaguna na po kayo para maligtas kayo sa COVID-19. Kaya yung mga hindi pa nga napakunahan dyan sa, ano, sa atin, ha? mga matatanda dyan. Let's go! Let's go to Mawa. Pakunan na kami lahat. We also have made our vaccination program within reach of PWDs, bedridden, sick, and immobile senior citizens through the Home Service Vaccination Program. opened the largest vaccination facility in the Philippines, the SM MOA Pasay City Gigavac Center, located at the Galleon of SM Mall of Asia, with the minimum capacity of 2,000. This, together with the other centers we have opened, we are now achieving 38.3% vaccination of our targeted 70% of our population to date. Our vaccine utilization at present is at 85%. This is still a long way to go, but after all these efforts, we are now getting a survey reading of 80% are now willing to take the vaccine. 
which is way above the initial 25% that we started from. Since Pasay is a commercial and business hub, we have partnered with private companies to help us with the A4 vaccination of their employees. We have given CBCR to eight companies who all pass the standards set by DOH and IATF. Now, even the immediate family of these employees are willing to get the job. We started our vaccine rollout on March 2nd at our Pasay City General Hospital. We were chosen as one of the five LGU hospitals to start the vaccine rollout. To date, we have vaccinated a total of 121,378 or again 38.3% of the 70% target for herd immunity out of the 312,600 population. Total vaccinated first dose A1 to A4 is 121,378. Total vaccinated second dose A1, A3, and A4, 37,320. We cannot let our guards down. As long as there are people who refuse to get vaccinated, we still face an uphill battle. But I am hopeful that with the hard work and some help from God, dissemination of the right information, common sense will prevail. Thank you and good morning. Ito po ang inyong lingkod, Mayor Eli Calixta Rubiano. Nakikita nyo, nakakausap nyo, kasama nyo. At tapat kayo pinaglilig ko na. Mag-iingat po tayo. God bless us all.
Good morning and welcome to the fifth Philippines Graphic Business Mirror webinar for this year. Today's topic is of interest to everyone, vaccine hesitancy. I am your host, Andrew De La Cruz, Wellness Editor of Philippines Graphic. We have two gentlemen today who will help open this webinar. For the first opening message, here is the publisher of Philippines Graphic and Business Mirror, Mr. T. Anthony C. Cabangon. When the government started talking about acquiring vaccines and Business Mirror in partnership with the Pharmaceutical and Healthcare Association of the Philippines, PHAP, and the Department of Health organized a webinar titled Health and Economic Prospects 2021, Sparking Hope. Can a vaccine see an end to the COVID-19 pandemic last December 2020? We made the promise then that there would be a part two since we anticipated that much would happen and that was what happened. The COVID-19 vaccine rollout finally happened in March 2021 where healthcare workers were the first to receive the job. However, that same month saw the number of COVID-19 cases rising steadily. The government was forced to place the national capital region and the provinces of Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna, and Rizal, or NCR+, under enhanced community quarantine. This year's ECQ was less strict as the government feared that a total lockdown would delay economic recovery. The vaccine rollout had its share of challenges. The vaccines were literally trickling into the country and not too many people were keen about taking the job. In view of this, we felt that it was the right time to keep that promise of a part two of the vaccine webinar. And here, we are today with vaccine hesitancy. Epekto sa buhay, epekto sa bayan. This time, this time around, we partnered with PHAP Cares Foundation and the Department of Health. For this morning, we were able to gather a distinguished panel of speakers who will update us on the government's vaccine rollout program and vaccine hesitancy. It is our hope that through this webinar, we will be able to update you all about how various local government units are doing with their vaccine rollout and how they are dealing with vaccine hesitancy. Thank you, and we hope this will be a fruitful morning for all of us. Okay, thank you, Boss Anton. For our second opening message, here is Mr. Yi Kok Chong, President of the PHAP Cares Foundation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Magandang umaga. I hope you can hear me well. Okay, the PHAP Cares Foundation is pleased to partner the Philippines Graphic Business Mirror and the Department of Health Department of Labor and Employment and Metro Manila Development Authority in the conduct of this forum, which supports the government's efforts to contain the pandemic through vaccination, among other public health interventions. COVID-19 continues to be a major public threat for all with profound health, social, and economic impacts around the world, Philippines included. In the country alone, we are deeply saddened that more than 1.3 million people have been infected, while close to 24,000 lives were lost due to COVID. As a science-driven industry, we are fully committed to rapidly respond to this pandemic. We are doing our best in three ways. One, the research and development of medicines, vaccines, and diagnostics. Two, 
helping ensure the uninterrupted supply of medicines for various conditions, despite major challenges. And three, through our corporate social responsibility initiatives. Ladies and gentlemen, aligned with our mandate to respond to health emergencies, the PHUB Cares Foundation launched a campaign to help protect frontliners and support communities affected by the pandemic. Collectively, we have contributed about 120 million peso monetary and in-kind donations to the country's COVID-19 response. The campaign was launched to help protect frontliners and support more than 1.5 million families and over 155 hospitals throughout the country. In-kind donations consist of personal protective equipment, test kits, ventilators, and medicines. And now, after more than 200 clinical trials and nearly 300 partnerships and collaborations among manufacturers, we are pleased that vaccine production has increased. In just a few months, from zero to 2.2 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses by the end of May. And with an astounding estimate of 11 billion doses by the end of 2021. With these developments, the campaign of PHUB Cares is now being focused on supporting the government in its massive vaccination drive. This forum seeks to highlight the importance of vaccination to individual health and the country's economy. It will also be a platform to cascade facts about vaccination, as well as feature the efforts of both national and local governments for better appreciation of their initiatives. It is our hope that more people will be vaccinated because vaccination is definitely one of the ways by which we could protect ourselves and restart our economy. We commend the efforts of Secretary Carlito Galvez and Special Advisor Dr. Teodoro Herbosa for their hard work in securing vaccine doses for our priority sectors, starting from the healthcare workers, the elderly, people with health conditions, and now our economic frontliners, which we also belong in the pharmaceutical industry. We appreciate Secretary Sylvester Bello's commitment to ensure that our economic frontliners are protected as a give back to the health and the wealth of the country. The efforts of the Department of Health Health Promotion Bureau, under the leadership of Dr. Beverly Ho, are most appreciated as we establish facts and dispel myths about vaccination. We also acknowledge the initiatives of our Metro Manila Development Authority under the able leadership of its chairman, Mr. Benho Abalos, the Metro Manila Council through its chairman, Mayor Edwin Olivares, and Paraniake City Administrator, Mr. Fernando Soriano, in urgently vaccinating our priority groups. We also put our attention on efforts to ground on, on the ground of our Baguio City Mayor, Benjamin Magalong, Dagupan City Mayor, Brian Lim, Bataan Governor, Albert Garcia, Bulacan Governor, Daniel Fernando, and Pasay City Mayor, Imelda Calixto Rubiano, to protect their constituents. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me at this moment to give a tribute to a leader who was a symbol of democracy in the Philippines and the world, along with his father and mother. Former President Benigno Aquino III championed universal health care for the provisions to every Filipino the highest possible quality of health care that is accessible, efficient, equity, equitably distributed adequately funded, fairly financed, and appropriately used by an informed and empowered public. This aspiration continues to be highly relevant until today as we battle against the pandemic and other healthcare concerns that impact the lives of Filipinos. Now, as we navigate our way out of the pandemic, 
the PHUB Cash Foundation will be initiating partnerships with you, centering on pharmaceutical security resilience in preparation for future pandemics. I look forward to more collaboration with you. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yi. Titled Vaccine Hesitancy, Epekto sa Buhay, Epekto sa Bayan. We have gathered today a very distinguished panel of speakers who will discuss vaccine hesitancy and update us on the vaccine rollout. To make this webinar more interesting for our viewers, we will have a contest. I will be asking two questions during the webinar, and each question will have two winners. Each winner will receive one Tefal iron and one Tita pack, courtesy of Center for Growing and Giving Foundation, which runs the Sunshine Farm. To join the contest, please like the Facebook page of Philippines Graphic and send your answers via PM Via PM, Shira Barnuevo, our page administrator, will inform you of our nine win of our winners at the end of the webinar. To start the ball rolling with our webinar, allow me to introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker was supposed to be Secretary Carlito Galvez, the chief implementer of the National Task Force Against COVID-19, but he had a prior appointment. He is represented by a former health undersecretary who helped achieve universal health care coverage. He also led the modernization of public hospitals through health facilities enhancement funds and the public-private partnerships. He is currently a special advisor to the Philippines National Task Force Against COVID-19 and is a professor of emergency medicine and trauma surgery at the University of the Philippines Philippine General Hospital and at the National Telehealth Center at UP Manila. Here is Dr. Chadoro Herbosa. Dr. Herbosa, good morning. Disconnected for a while. Thank yes. you very much for the kind in, in introduction. Uh, allow me to read the speech of our uh, vaccine czar, Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr., who is currently uh, occupied in another engagement. Uh, first of all, congratulations to uh, the Philippine Graphic and the PHAP, Found PHAP Cares Foundation for this uh, vaccine webinar. Very important indeed. Uh, let me also recognize uh, Mr. Anthony Cabangon of the Philippine Graphic and the Business Mirror, as well as uh, as well as the Dr. Ro Ro Rosita Quijano Shasoko of the Pharmaceutical and Healthcare Association of the Philippines PHAP Cares Foundation, Mr. Chong, and uh, all the other speakers that have been invited to this activity today. This activity will complement the government's efforts to educate our fellow Filipinos on the benefits of getting inoculated against COVID-19, as well as to provide them with relevant and timely information on the country's vaccination program, a massive vaccination program indeed. Last June 7, we officially opened the vaccination program of our economic frontliners or those belonging to the A4 priority category. But we have already inoculated a number of our essential uh, workers, our labor sector, last May 1, during the celebration of Labor Day. We are very pleased that in just two weeks after the formal launch of the vaccine uh, program for A4, the number of jobs has risen from 16,818 per day in June 6 to 534,000 in 982 total shots administered as of June 20. This number is still far from the uh, 35.5 million economic frontliners that we need to protect against COVID-19. However, it is an indication that more Filipino workers are now willing to be inoculated so they can help the country's economic recovery and uh, economic uh, return. 
the simplification and expansion of the A4 category to include all workers in the private, government, and informal sectors, including those employed and working in the private households, is among the key strategies that we have lobbied with the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases. We believe it is both logical and practical to inoculate all individuals who go out of their homes to work. These are the people who drive our economy, regardless of the industry they belong to. All of them are vulnerable to the disease and they all need to be inoculated. As I have emphasized, our economic frontliners are our modern day heroes who play a key role during this pandemic. They risk their lives daily so that they can continue to provide essential services to their countrymen. Hinding hindi po matutumbasan ang pagod, hirap at sakripisyo para sa inyong mga pamilya, mga komunidad at sa ating bayan. This is the reason why the national government, the local government units, and the private sector have joined forces to ensure that we will be able to administer the first dose of the vaccines to all 35.5 million individuals under the A4 sector by September of this year. By pooling our resources to procure these life-saving vaccines and decentralizing the implementation of vaccine administration, we are confident that we can realize this goal at the soonest possible time. The private sector procured vaccines will all be turned over to the companies and organizations which procured these doses. We are giving them the flexibility to administer the vaccines, not just for their employees, but for dependents, for their dependents as well. Meanwhile, the vaccines procured by the government will be allocated also to our A4 category. We just want to remind everyone that not all the vaccines we have in our supply inventory can be deployed for economic frontliners as of the moment. And this is pertaining to the vaccines from the COVAX facility of UNICEF and WHO, which is where the bulk of our supplies come from. Uh, they are specifically allocated for the inoculation of our healthcare workers, our senior citizens or A2 category, our persons with comorbidities or our A3, and the indigent population. Uh, so they skipped, they did, did not give it to the A4. So the A4 will only be coming from the government and the private company procurements. However, there are individuals who belong to A4 category but are at the same time may fall under the priority groups A2, A3, or A5. And these individuals may be vaccinated by the vaccines coming from the COVAX facility. As the government procured doses begin to arrive in bulk, as well as this purchased by the private sector, we are confident that we will be able to achieve another milestone by the end of June. 100,000 doses of anti-COVID-19 vaccines procured by private firms are arriving on June 27. This is through the Moderna purchase. This is part of a 250,000 doses initial delivery of Moderna, where 150,000 were procured by the government. Another 1.5 million doses of Sinovac just arrived yesterday. And I'm happy to share that the company has committed to complete the deliveries of all our procured doses of more than 20 million doses by September of this year. This means larger volumes are expected on a monthly basis starting this month. More than 2 million doses of AstraZeneca from the COVAX facility are also expected to be delivered this month, June, as well as 150,000 doses of Sputnik V's component 2 vaccines. These private sector procured doses will significantly increase the country's vaccination throughput for the A4 category and complement the vaccine supply procured by the government for this month. 
In July, AstraZeneca will deliver 1.170 million doses purchased by Filipino companies. The, the government is also expecting the delivery of 4.5 million doses from Sinovac and 1 million doses from Moderna and another 1 million doses from Sputnik V of Gamaleya. Starting August, we are expected we are expecting 15 to 25 million doses to arrive monthly from various manufacturers. These doses include both the government and private sector procured as well as those coming from the COVAX facility. Our main goal is to inoculate more Filipinos at a faster rate and ensure the protection of the most vulnerable individuals. Hence, we call on each and every one of you to be among our vaccine advocates, not just in your workplaces, but most especially in your homes. Let us encourage every family, every tatay, nanay, lolo, lola, kuya, at ate to get the jabs. The vaccine will provide us all with an added protection aside from our strict adherence to the minimum public health standards of mask wearing, hugas, at iwas. The successful implementation of our vaccination program will be the key to reviving our economy, bringing back a greater sense of normalcy to our people and building back better a Philippine economy. Maraming salamat po at magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Herbosa, for that update. Our next speaker has held several positions in government. He was Justice Secretary during the administrations of Presidents Corazon C. Aquino and Fidel V. Ramos. He has served as Solicitor Gener General, Chairman of the GRP Negotiating Panel for Talks with the CPP, NPA, and DF. NDF, to speak about the guidelines relating to COVID-19 vaccine administration in the workplace, here is Labor and Employment Secretary Silvestre Bellio III. Good morning, Secretary. Secretary, good morning. Secretary Bello. Good morning, Secretary Bello. I Wawala siya. Yeah. Good morning, Secretary Bello. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Sorry because I'm mobile, but let me greet all the participants on today's webinar on vaccine. There you are, sir. Good morning, everyone. Yes, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Good morning, sir. We see you na po. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Go ahead po. Morning. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go yes, ahead uh, po. First, let me greet all participants of today's webinar on vaccine. I hope everybody is healthy and safe from COVID-19. By the way, thank you very much, Philippine Graphics and Business Mirror, for this initiative a learning activity focusing on vaccine hesitancy. As you all know, our government has been literally begging all available doses of vaccines from everywhere at the very start of the year. And Secretary Galvez is principally responsible for our success in securing for us the needed volume for our people. Thus, the millions of doses started to pour in and hopefully continue to come in to satisfy and meet our requirement. Now that we have the vaccine, we have the problem of acceptance and hesitance. So how does the hesitance of our people to get vaccinated affect 
our life and our nation. There is no doubt that people's reluctance delays our program to inoculate a, horde, a huge portion of our population. Health experts consider inoculation as the only way to fight and end the pandemic that has taken away lives, jobs, and certainly it might take our future. Delaying our program to completely vaccinate our adult population, therefore, only prolongs our suffering as a people and as a nation. We need to prevail over this hesitance and instill confidence on the vaccine. And I am doing my share by getting inoculated early and holding a feeling on all our workers to do the same. Kahit na anong klaseng vaccine, basta magpabakuna po kayo. Of course, there are the limitations because even those who refuse to be jabbed due to lack of trust in the doses will remain free. They're even protected by the laws of our land. This is very true in the workplace where such freedom and protection are fully recognized and provided by the Department of Labor and Employment through the guidelines which I issued under administrative number on COVID-19 vaccines in workplaces. <coughs> Excuse me. Under the guidelines, any employee who refuses or fails to be vaccinated shall not be discriminated against in terms of tenure, in terms of promotion, training, even in pay and other benefits. Also, employees who refuse to be vaccinated may not be terminated from their employment. The guidelines is very clear that no vaccine, no work policy is not and will never be allowed. How is that for the people endangering our lives because they simply hesitate or they lack confidence on the vaccine? There is wisdom in Labor Advisory number 3 of 2021 that contains the following guidelines. If you remember, Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infection Disease granted the request of private companies to purchase vaccines for their workers. Previously, vaccine acquisition was exclusive for the but President Duterte believed that rollout of the national inoculation program would accelerate and benefit workers and the economy by granting the request of our employers. And so the private companies were able to buy vaccines for their workers. And to support them, Dole issued advisory number three, which provides that covered establishments and employers are allowed to procure COVID-19 vaccines, supplies, and other related appropriate government agencies in the procurement, storage, transport, deployment, and administration of COVID-19 vaccines. But the vaccination policy which shall, be, which shall be adopted and implemented by covered establishment employers shall be consistent with the guidelines issued by the Department of Health and the Interagency Task Force. Now, here is the catch. The guidelines provide that covered establishment and employers shall strongly encourage, shall strongly encourage, I repeat, encourage their employees to get vaccinated. Of course, as they say, there are many ways of skinning the cat. 
No, we are not going to skin the acid and ones. The objective is find as many ways as possible to convince them to accept the vaccine. Ika nga, kung gugustuin, maraming paraan. Learn from the local government units. Nagpaparapol ng bigas, baka, bahay, at kung ano-anong mga mapaoo lang ang mga nagdadalawang isip. Each one of us can find our own version of encouragement. When we finally catch one, the soap is the kind that can open eyes and mind to the survival of our workers and the people. Kami sa Dole, we came up with a bicycleta program. Pag nagdalawang dosage ka na, mabibigyan ka ng bisikleta may laman na cellphone at may load na 5,000. That is our participation in the vaccination encouragement. And so, my dear friends, let me advise and appeal to you and recognize the fact that our survival is a shared responsibility of all governments, and not only government, but all people. Thank you very much, and good morning. Thank you, Secretary Bello. Now we know what to expect with the vac when the vaccines are being administered in the workplace. Before we have our first question and answer portion, I will now ask you my first question for today's contest. The question is, what department did Secretary Silvestre Rebello head during the time of Presidents Corazon C. Aquino and Fidel V. Ramos? What department did Secretary Silvestre Rebello head during the time of Presidents Corazon C. Aquino and Fidel V. Ramos? Don't forget to like the Facebook page of Philippines Graphic before sending your answers via PM. We are looking for the first two winners. Now, let me turn you over to Ms. Lourdes M. Fernandez, the Editor-in-Chief of Business Mirror, who will moderate this first question and answer portion. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Secretary. Hello. Thank you, Secretary Bello, and thank you, Dr. Ted Herbosa. Um, now, our first question is uh, from the Business Mirror editors. We just would like to ask uh, us, Dr. Ted Herbosa, First of all, congratulations to your teams. Congratulations to the, our hardworking Secretary Galvez. We know you've been working nonstop just to bring in those vaccines. And now the problem is just to hurdle the seeming vaccine hesitancy. But sir, um, we've gotten some reports from the ground. We keep getting these reports that part of the hesitancy might not be really hesitancy, but more of a problem at the on the ground. Like, uh, there are some people who are saying that the too short notice in some uh, of some LGUs is proving a problem to some workers because they say even if they sign up or um, online to get their jobs, they are they get the notification sometimes in less than half a day and they don't have time to ask their employers uh, for leave, no, and they cannot. Uh, uh, they don't have enough time to leave their children or their elderly at home. Um, do you have, have you provided some guidance to the LGUs on the notification problems? Because we keep hearing of these reports that LGUs say there were 25,000 who signed up for this day, but only 5,000 showed up. Uh, might that not be part of the seeming uh, hesitancy? It's just a problem of notification, sir. Dr. Ted? Dr. Ted? Dr. Ted? Dr. Herbosa? Dr. Herbosa? Dr. 
Dr. Herbosa. Okay. Um, we might have to okay. we might have to forego Mona. Okay, you can I ask the about. next question? Can I pose the next question to Secretary Bellio? Wala po yata online si Secretary Bello also ma'am. Nawawala siya. It's not on board. Secretary Bello? None ma'am. Okay. We'll come back na lang ma'am. Okay, we'll come back to our first Q&A um, session as soon as our two guests are on board again. Thank you, ma'am. So let's move on to our next speaker. Is she here already? I'll just check if she's here. Dr. Ho, are you already on board? Dr. Ho, are you already on board? No, she's not on board yet. I'll just get chairman. Dr. Ho? She's not yet on board. None. Okay, can we, Chairman Avalos, are you ready, Pop? We can have you first, Chairman. Okay, our next speaker assumed his present position in January of this year. He served as the mayor of Mandaluyong City from 1998 to 2004 and from 2007 to 2016. He also served as representative of Mandaluyong City from 2004 to 2007. Here is Mr. Ben-Hur Abalos, the chairman of the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority. Good morning, chairman. Good morning, Lourdes, and good morning to all our viewer, viewers uh, this morning. Um, I, um, since I'm only given five minutes, uh, what I'll do is I, I, I'll, I'll compress my report in pictures. Uh, number one, uh, in, in Metro Manila, what our mayors did is, of course, with the uh, with the registration, they were very innovative. Some have uh, QR codes that uh, that they promote. Others have pre-scheduling. And uh, right now, what we have is, of course, uh, the express lane. Because uh, the A1, the A2, and the A3, A1 are the medical frontliners. A2 are the senior citizens. And, of course, A3 are the persons with comorbidities. They should always, always uh, be prioritized. Now we're in the A4. I'm going to show you pictures right on Quezon City in, in Mandaluyong. Next, please. These are the gyms that we're using. Uh, right now, in Pasay, the ones that we're using right now. Of course, uh, Makati. Next, please. You just, of course, in Muntinlupa, they use the gyms, the hospitals. And these are the mega ones, the big ones, because, you know, in the mega sites, what we did, our, our LGUs became innovative. They had partnered with different hospitals, with different malls. Look at this with the gig in Bonifacio High Street. Of course, in Paranaque with the Ayala malls. No, I, I believe Mayor uh, uh, Olivares will speak later about this. Next, please. Of course, in Pasay, that's SM, Mall of Asia, SM Sukat. Next, please. Robinson's in Quezon City, LGU. So this is a, a strong uh, uh, synergy between the private and the local. Not only do they provide sites, but some of them even provide medical frontliners, doctors, nurses. Next, please. Mega Mall. Uh, Mega Mall also provided doctors and nurses. Next, please. Next, Las Piñas, South Mall, Robinson's. Yeah, next, please. And others are very innovative, like in Bakati, they've got a drive-thru. And not only that, we've got even golf courses, uh, walk, walk Golf and Country Club, schools like Don Bosco, other schools. So everyone is pitching in. It's just like a community pantry because they've already, already seen the, the need to, to have partners no, with everyone. So everyone is now pitching in. Next, please. 
Now, even our our agency MMDA, we really also pitched in. We are we are we have a mobile team. Our employees, about uh, more than almost everyone, has been vaccinated with 8,098 employees of MMDA. Next, please. And we've stretched this to even the presidential communications operations with 204 doses. Next, please. And here, 5,500 with the office of the uh, peace uh, process because they're always on the ground. Next, please. And also the anti-corruption office with 88. Next, please. Office of the Ombudsman. Next, please. Mobile fund. These are our friends in the movie industry. For one and a half years, the movie houses have been closed. They're in need of, of help. So these are the ones on the field, the, the uh, directors behind the scene, and even the actors, actresses. We're, he we're helping the uh, movie industries, the entertainment industries. Next, please. Okay, next. Now, let's go through here. Right now, we've got about... Uh, 80% of the medical uh, frontliners, about 100% almost of the medical frontliners in the A1 with the first dose. With the second dose, it's about 80%. For senior citizens, it's 598 and 245. And of course, for the third person with comorbidities, it's 1.1 million for the first dose and 407 for the second dose. Next, please. This is the graph of the daily average accomplishment that we have, all the mayors in Metro Manila. Before, our target was only 100,000. We started with 36. This was sometime May. But you could look at the graph. The peak was 207,000. Of course, it depends on the availability of vaccine. Through here that you could see that easily, Metro Manila mayors can deliver 200 jobs a day. Right now, it's about 166,000. Again, uh, it's dependent on the vaccine. Next, please. This is the weekly average accomplishment, if you will see. It's about uh, 178,000 every week we could deliver. We started, actually, the target is on the low. It's only about 100,000 to 120,000. But right now, on a weekly basis, Metro Manila is doing 100. 878,000 jobs. Of course, this is because of the strong synergy between government and private. Also, this T3, they helped us with what we call the supply chain management. If, if for example, last April, there were only about 1.5 million vaccines, the projections for June is about 11 million. You could just imagine the number of vaccines coming in. So the distribution, you know, it will depend on the performance. T3 is helping us. What is T3? It's a group of private companies headed by Mr. Bill Luce. Next, please. Now, this is the most important thing in this presentation. Where are we right now in terms of inoculations? Right now, we have inoculated about 3.6 million. No, 3.6 million jobs have been given. Now, let us look at pro projections. Okay, let's... Let's not go to 200,000. Let's not go to two, uh, even 170,000. Let's go through an average, let's say, of 114,000 jobs every day. If you do that for 30 days, that's about 3.4 million. Now, if you multiply that into three, meaning July, August, and September, that will amount to about 10.2 million. You add 10.2 million and you add 3.2 63.68 million, that would amount to about 13.9, almost 14 million, 14 million by the end of September. And that's a low, at a low end, that's only 114,000. What does 14 million jobs mean? It means that one half of Metro Manila, almost one half, approximately one half, will be inoculated twice, first dose and second dose. So hopefully we will be having population protection by the end of September. Thank you. Okay, that's the end of my presentation, Lourdes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman Abalos. Now, may I, may I call back Dr. Beverly Ho? I think she's already there.
Okay. Okay. Our next speaker is a fellow of the Morris Greenberg World Fellow Program at Yale University, the Equity Initiative, and the Atlantic Institute. She holds an MD from the University of the Philippines and an MPH in Health Policy and Management from the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health as a Fulbright Scholar. To talk about the truth about the COVID-19 vaccines, here is Dr. Beverly Lorraine Ho, the concurrent Director for Health Promotion Bureau and Disease Prevention and Control Bureau of the Department of Health. Good morning, Dr. Beverly. Hi, good morning, Ms. Ann. Um, thank you very much uh, again to all the organizers um, of today's forum for this opportunity to share our work no, and to advocate for um, vaccines, COVID-19 vaccines in the country. May I kindly ask uh, the Secretariat to kindly flash my slides. Thank you. All right. Side sides up. Ah, see ya. So in the next few slides, I'll just run through some of the most common misconceptions that we have about COVID-19 vaccines and the hope of um, one, um, at least no helping us get to decide, lalo na kung hindi pa kayo nabakunahan or you haven't registered um, with your LGUs, um, to help you decide to go get that job already. Um, but on the other hand, if you've already decided, um, I hope that this presentation will help you help other people um, by um, providing tips no, on how to explain or debunk several of the fake news that's going around about the vaccine. Next slide, please. So we all know that um, COVID-19 is real. No? It has led to as many as 23,000 deaths in the country. This is as of June 22, our data. Um, and despite uh, having millions of cases, we know that most of the cases are mild and asymptomatic. No? So that was around 95% of that 1.3 million. But there's a remainder 5%, which accounts for around 65,000 people who've had COVID, did not die, but um, are um, moderate to severe type of COVID. So what does this really mean for us? So we also know that the deaths fr coming from COVID are really accounted for by those older than 60 years old. Next slide. And more importantly, we also know that senior citizens, for example, um, will have higher risks no, of deaths from COVID and we will hear from 10 to 19 years old going up, the risk really increases. No? And this is very much reflected in our data. Excellent. And among people with comorbidities, it's the same. No? So the typical um, death rate of 0.9% coming from those without uh, pre-existing conditions is significantly increased. No? when you have other disease conditions. And this is really the reason why, apart from healthcare workers, the a populations have been prioritized to get the vaccines first. Next, please. So why are we afraid? Though when we talk about 95% of people come out scot-free no, from COVID, so mild naman or asymptomatic, um, the problem now is that severe COVID, when you um, are unfortunately part of that 5% of uh, people no, who get moderate to severe COVID, severe COVID has long-term sequelae. No? And this is what physicians and medical experts are finding out. And there's no guarantee that if you get sick, you will actually walk away without an issue. No? So that's why we don't want to risk it. And you see on the left-hand side of your screen, many symptoms that continue to persist. No? But this syndrome is actually still not yet well studied. Ang dami pa pong new data na pumapatok. But all it's telling us is that when people who've had moderate to severe COVID tell us na parang hindi pa rin ako okay a few months after getting COVID, it's actually true. No? And scientists are beginning to uncover what it is. But what it's telling us is that ayaw natin i-risk. No? Kasi hindi siya 
three weeks lang galing na may possible siyang long-term sequelae. Next slide, please. So it is in view of this, no, knowing that this is the um, risk of death from severe COVID and risk for long-term sequelae that we really need COVID-19 vaccines. And they provide 100% protection from severe COVID-19. So this is not uh, unique. No? In the past, we've used inactivated polio vaccines or influenza vaccines, which do, they do not necessarily just prevent you from not getting the disease. But more importantly, you can get the disease, but you will not get the severe symptoms. So, alam natin, no? yung polio can cause paralyzation. So, when you get the vaccine, you can still get sick, but hindi ka mapaparalyze. Ba? Same way, no? with influenza, you can still get ubusipon, ba? even after you've got your flu vaccine. But, it will uh, protect you from the hospitalization version of flu. Next slide, please. So, none of the vaccines can also cause COVID-19. Marami kasi, no, natakot na, ay, nako, pwede ba akong magka-COVID dahil nagpapakun ako? No? Sa, the answer is, plain, no, no. Because no COVID vaccine actually contains the live virus, no. If any, COVID-19 vaccines that are available to the entire world are all those na nakikita nyo sa baba, no. So, inactivate or purely, no, napatay na po, um, parts of it, um, vector, nakalagay yung genetic material niya in some other um, type of virus. And finally, no, it really just the genetic material, which are your mRNA vaccines. So you don't have to worry about this. Next slide, please. Uh, also, some are afraid that the mRNA vaccines can change your DNA. So the quick answer to that, look at the photo na nakabox, no? the mRNA vaccines will just go inside your cell. No, but not into that blue um, circle, which is your nucleus. And our body, you know, always um, designed in the best possible way, um, is able to make sure that our genetic material is preserved in that blue circle. No, so hindi po siya pasok doon. Next slide, please. So the, it cannot alter your DNA. So because of what I've mentioned um, in the past few slides, um, it is really not logical no, that you will test positive in the RT-PCR after you get vaccinated. Hindi po yon totoo, no? So, you will test positive for antibody, but not for RT-PCR. And in case you test positive for RT-PCR, it's likely that you actually have a real infection, no? So, but then, some people are also asking, dapat ba routine ako magpa-test sa laboratory after getting vaccinated? The answer is no, no? Because no lab test can ascertain the level of protection that you get of the vaccine. Next slide, please. So vaccines also have not caused um, any deaths in the country. No? And this um, pertains also to fears around um, thrombotic event no? coming from specific brands of vaccine. And we just need to recognize no, that the risk have to be contextualized at ibang uh, situation. No? So, in fact, kung naninigarilyo po kayo, malaki actually yung risk nyo for thrombotic events. Um, or lagi kayo, no, nagta-travel on a plane na hindi po gumagalaw yung um, paa nyo, diba? So, yung mga thrombotic events uh, due to um, traveling. No? So, next slide, please. So, also, vaccines have not been linked to infertility or miscarriage. So, we, alongside the Philippine Obstetrics and Gynecologic Society, still recommend that women in their second and third trimester continue to get vaccinated. Um, all vaccines that are available in the country, pwedeng pwede pong gamitin, uh, except for Gamela Sputnik. Next slide, please. Also, syempre, no, the vaccines do not contain RFID. Adito, no, I'm being very um, philosopho in this slide by just showing you ano po yung mga needles that we actually use in the vaccination versus a needle that will be able to contain that RFID chip that they have been talking about. No? Impossible kasi we use something, a very small needle that will just allow the fluid from the vaccine to enter your body. Next slide, please. Um, it's also important to know that less than 2% lang of vaccines in 
actually report any reactions. And we know that these reactions are manageable, no? And they leave or they resolve in within two to three days, no? Maximum three days tapos na po siya. And there are very simple ways to manage these uh, side um, effects or what we call reactions, di ba? Kung masakit, pwedeng maglagay ng ice pack or pwedeng minum ng paracetamol, di ba? Kapag may headache or uh, masakit yung um, may lagnat, no? Next slide, please. Also, um, just to reiterate, vaccines have not caused any deaths in the Philippines because these are being reviewed by our independent medical experts, no? So, iba po yung mga dahilan ng mga ininvestigahang namatay, no? So, um, number one dyan, COVID pa rin po yung kinamatay nila, COVID-19 infection. Some die from cerebrovascular or um, heart disease or stroke, di ba? But what we're sure of, no, so far we have zero deaths caused directly by the vaccine. Next slide, please. Also, some people are wondering, kailan ko pa bang magpabakuna after ako ma-infection, no? So the uh, advice now and the guidance is, yes, kailangan po natin magpabakuna para dumami pa rin po yung antibodies natin. And noon, our guidelines is you have to wait for 90 days or three months after you get, um, rec after you recover. But now, immediately after you recover, as long as um, you've been cleared by your physician, wala nang sintomas, okay na kayo, di na kayo nakakahawa, pwede, pwede na magpabakuna. Next, please. So, the last point that we wish to make is really that no one is safe until everyone is, no? So, similar to what uh, Dr. Ted, um, Secretary Bellio, and Chairman Abalos has mentioned, no, talagang we are all uh, want to be very aggressive in making sure that as many are vaccinated, ba? Sabi nga ni Chair Abalos, yung target natin is, nako, 50%, no, or more of uh, teams sa NCR mabakunahan, ba? In the next few months' time. And that should be the goal, actually, for every area, no? Bawat balangay, bawat workplace, uh, bawat, um, because this is the only way we can make sure everyone is safe. Next slide, please. So our main message, na sana hindi natin lahat makalimutan, is maraming fake news going around, but let us be assured that there are systems in place to make sure that vaccines are safe, effective, and free. We just need to sign up through our LGUs who have been very efficient in operationalizing our vaccination program and practicing the minimum public health standards regardless of our vaccination status. Next slide, please. Um, and so with this, I'm leaving you with several of the links to the many materials that we have developed um, here um, in the DOH along with our partners, and you can download them, use them um, in your own areas of work. No? So in my videos, John, audio recording, um, booklets, mga brochures, no, na pwede nyo po lahat magamit. Next slide, please. And finally, ito po yung inaasam natin, no, a uh, very Merry Christmas, a very Pinoy Christmas wherein we really are able to spend time with our families, um, all together, big reunions, diba? But this will not be possible if many of us will continue to not get so I do hope that we've cleared up some of the most common misconceptions about um, the COVID-19 vaccines and hopefully mas marami na po sa atin ang tumakbo or pumunta sa ating mga um, LGU sites para po mag-sign up at mag -abuna. So thank you very much. Um, back to you, Paul. Hey, thank you so much, Dr. Ho, for your presentation. Our next speaker was supposed to be Paranaque Mayor Edwin Olivares, who also chairs the Metro Manila Council. We had to attend a, to a very important meeting this morning and sent our next speaker as his representative. Here is Mr. Fernando Soriano, the City Administrator of Paranaque. Good morning, Mr. Soriano. Yes, uh, good morning and good, good morning to the participants of this event uh, this morning. I'll be representing on behalf of the mayor and uh, speaking a little issue on res in respect to the status and initiative for the vaccine rollout in the city of Paranaque. First of all, we want to greet the, the, our good secretary of labor, Secretary 
uh, Silvis Trebello of the Department of uh, Employment, Labor and Employment, uh, Chairman of the MMDA, uh, Mayor uh, Ben Abelos, the Mayor Benjamin uh, Magalong, our friends from the DOH led by Dr. Biber uh, Lorinho of the Health Promotion Bureau, the NTF Advisor, uh, Dr. Ted Herbosa, our friends from the Business Mayor on Philippine Graphics led by Mr. Anthony Cabangon, our friends from the Pharmaceutical and Healthcare Association of the Philippines, led by Mr. Rie Kok uh, Chong, and Dr. Uh, uh, Rory Shisoko, who is a native from Paranaque, the President and Executive Director of the Farm Cares Foundation, respectively. Fellow government workers, friends, good morning. Uh, this, the, the city government of Paranaque thanks uh, indeed for this opportunity to discuss our ongoing efforts against COVID-19, particularly on the vaccination rollout in the city of Paranaque. To date, uh, as we have started our vaccination uh, rollout as of March 5, using the doses from the COVAX uh, facility and other donations, at present, the city government of Paranaque, utilizing exclusively our doctors, nurses, and other medical staff from the city health uh, office and our uh, medical frontliners from two public hospital, hospital operated by the city, Hospital ng Paranaque 1, Hospital ng Paranaque 2. As of June 23, 2021, we have administered around 190,297 doses which is more than 21% of the target 894. And with that, uh, we are targeting 60% of that, which is about 446,923 individuals to be vaccinated in our city. And uh, concomitant with that, 197,297 doses that we have administered to them. The city is about to procure and uh, awaiting for the delivery of our consummated contract uh, through a tripartite agreement of uh, uh, vaccines for the city, Sinovac and AstraZeneca, 50,000 of Sinovac and uh, 200,000 of AstraZeneca. We can indeed target and uh, consummate the vaccination for the 60% of which, which is 446, probably if it arrives for the next two months, then before, December, before November, we can uh, target the herd immunity for our city at about 60% from the total uh, population of the city of Paranaque. Our daily average job capacity per the national uh, COVID-19 vaccination dashboard as of June 23 is 5,435. However, during the past weeks, we have already averaging around 6,700 jobs, and this will continue to go up as vaccines becomes widely available. In terms of vaccine hesitancy, we are proud to say that in the city of Paranaque, our people now are lining up, especially in our mega facility vaccine, uh, vaccination centers, sites which are located in uh, uh, Ayala Mall, at the second floor and the fifth uh, floor of the Ayala Mall Center in Makapagal, ISM Sukat, ISM BF, and uh, ISM uh, uh, Bikutan. All of this, we can say that... Uh, queuing, lining up of people ready to be vaccinated are indeed a welcome for all of us in the city of Paranaque. As a matter of fact, the lines in our major vaccination centers is starting forming very early morning and we usually end up past 9 o'clock in the evening to accommodate the long lines of queuing for our people and uh, there are even reports that even uh, outside from Paranaque City, they are coming to us for the engagement for them to be vaccinated. Out of the 190,297 doses we have administered, as of June 23, our economic frontliners accounted for three, about 33,305 doses since we started covering the A4 group last June 7, or averaging about 2,379 doses per day excluding Sundays. In addition with that, we have an ongoing mobile vaccination uh, operations to the different barangays in our city. And uh, uh, we have uh, categorized 
our groupings for the vaccination operation, both from the medical uh, office of our of our hospital in Paranaque and the city health office of the city, so that we can cover and center more of our centers in the barangay, especially to the gated subdivision that we have in the city of Paranaque. Again, in behalf of the mayor, we expect that the coverage of the A4 group to gradually increase in the coming days as the shares of the city and other priority groups uh, uh, decrease, notably medical frontliners and senior citizens, because many of them have already received their jobs. Additionally, also, for, the, for, for our city, we have engaged a, an agreement with our private sectors here for uh, for them to have a uh, acquisition of their vaccines available, not only for their employees, but likewise for the city government of Paranaque, for the people of Paranaque, namely the, the City of Dreams, the Soler group of companies, and the Okada group of companies also. And all of these big corporations in our city, they have what we call... Uh, the corporate social responsibility that they give to us and donate to us the vaccines that they acquired so that we can cascade to them, cascade to our people a wide range of possible vaccination opportunities that we can give to them earlier than expected so that we can arrive what we call for the herd immunity in our city. Uh, we have also, as I have said, I mentioned a while ago, the so-called mega vaccination site that those that can administer more than 1,000 doses per day, to mention again, and we would like to extend our thanks and appreciation to all of these groups, the Ayala Malls in Manila Bay, the uh, ISM uh, group of companies, which indeed they, op they, they offer their uh, facilities to us so that we can administer a very conducive area for the vaccination for our people. Aside from the malls that we have operated for the vaccination, we have cascaded also our vaccination operations down to the barangays, namely Barangay Marcelo Green, Barangay Don Bosco, Barangay San Bali, and Barangay BF, and as well as Barangay San Bali in, uh, in the city, covering the first and the second district. Uh, by configuration, the city of Baranaque, we only have 16 barangays. But in spite that we have 16 barangays, these barangays are indeed big barangays populated by many people or from all walks of life and uh, therefore the need for them to be vaccinated is again an utmost demand. Likewise, we continue vaccination for our residents in our two hospitals, namely again the Hospital ng Paranaque 1 and the Hospital ng Paranaque 2. We have also partnered with at least one private hospital in the city, the Medical Center Paranaque, which started giving vaccine doses this week. Again, in context for all of this, this is the program that we can show and offer to our people that our government is serious. The city government through our mayor, Edwin Olivar, is serious to cascade the vaccination effort to our people. Sabi nga ho natin dito, hanggat maaari, lahat ho ng umaapak sa area, sa lugar, sa lupain ng Paranaque, sana ho vaccinated po tayong lahat particularly so that our proximity to the airport and then the the the, the biggest terminal facility in this in, in, in metropolis which is the para the paranyak integrated terminal the ptex the people there are conglomerating and therefore the demand for vaccination is an utmost opportunity for them so that once and for all we can stop the menace of this uh, virus the covid-19 and protect our people from the cause and effect of all of this and lastly, uh, for the operation of our mobile vaccination program, or what we call the MVP, that are concentrated, uh, concentrated in gated villages and subdivision, and we hope to further expand this initiative to cover even private companies and other off-site locations within the jurisdiction of Paranac City. Overall, once we receive the vaccines ordered by the city government of Paranaque, namely the Sinovac, AstraZeneca, and hopefully once the the emergency use authority will be given to the uh, to the Novavax, we also engage intend to acquire for the city and for our people. All of this will be used for our people, and then the, the vaccination will always be continuing effort 
that we are going to give to them. We expect, therefore, to double the vaccination capacity, and we hope to cover all eligible residents earlier by November this year. Uh, with that, in behalf of our mayor, we thank you for the opportunity for giving us and share what our city is doing for the vaccination uh, uh, rolling out in our city, and therefore all of us be cleared and be safe from the minutes of this COVID-19. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Soriano, for your presentation. We invited a number of mayors and governors to take part in this webinar. However, they could not make it and decided to send us their messages, which were played prior to the start of the webinar. The messages were from Bataan Governor Albert Garcia, Bulacan Governor Daniel Fernando, Nagupan City Mayor Brian Lim, and Pasay City Mayor Imelda Calixto Rubian. There was one mayor who agreed to be present during this webinar, and he is a retired Director General who spent 38 years and eight months of service in the Philippine National Police. When he retired, he entered the private sector and joined Steel Asia as SVP for operations, was a member of the mother board of directors of PNOC, and as an independent director for InfraDev Holdings Incorporated. He later decided to try his hand in politics and was eventually elected as a mayor of Baguio City. Here is Mayor Benjamin B. Magalo. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, Ma'am Ann. And I would like to greet all the participants of this webinar. Good morning to our organizers, to our Pharmaceutical and Healthcare Association of the Philippines, the Department of Health, the Metro Manila Council, and Business Mirror. And I just would like to inform you that this is a very timely topic and worthy of full discussion as it will spell out the future of our economy. So what I'm about to present to you is basically the principles and the concept that Baguio City is adopting to address vaccine hesitancy in the city. So if you allow me to start, vaccine hesitancy is multifactorial in the sense that the World Health Organization enumerated key factors, and I'm referring to the three Cs. We have complacency, meaning people would say COVID-19 is a mild disease. We also have lack of confidence. It talks about safety issues as well as questioning the efficacy of vaccines. And finally, the convenience issues. We're referring to the economic costs or the opportunity costs or the foregone benefit that would have been derived by an option not chosen. While hesitancy is multifactorial, its solution is also multifactorial. In the city of Baguio, we are adopting the two C's and the two S's strategies to address vaccine hesitancy. And we're referring to command control, communication, systems, thinking, and finally, speed. Now, let me go to command and control. Command and control is basically the means by which a commander recognizes what needs to be done and sees to it that the appropriate actions are taken. The goal here is to build trust and to create vaccine demand. Let me talk to you about the four essential elements under the command and control. And these are organizational structure, the policies, the financing, and finally, the process. When we talk about organizational structure, it means certain activities are directed in order to achieve the goals of the vaccination program. Structure is a valuable tool in achieving coordination. As it specifies reporting relationships, delineates formal communication channels, and describes how separate actions of individuals are supposed to be linked together. When we talk about policy, these are sets of rules and guidelines and framework that are to be adopted. And finally, financing means fund generation, mobilization, and allocation of financial resources. And finally, the process, which spells out tactics and courses of action to carry out specific plans and programs. Thus, command and control would translate to clear, clear roles and functions, clear plans, clear goals, clear vision that would negate vaccine hesitancy. From preparation, implementation to monitoring and evaluation, command and control has to have foresight to be for one. This will be put or this will put confidence to the leadership, thus increasing vaccine acceptance. Vaccine hesitancy is more than addressing the vaccine's fear. 
trust in or respect for authorities cannot be taken for granted. People base their risk perception on many factors other than information. Next is communication. And it is the power of communication surface in this, during these pandemic times. Communication has to have the following goals. It's to build population resilience against vaccine rumors and scares through ongoing activities to ensure a strong program well prepared to respond to any event that may potentially erode confidence and respond immediately to any such event with appropriate actions based on an assessment of the situation. It is paramount that baseline data has to be established before the vaccination program. And in the city of Baguio, we have conducted vaccine acceptance survey before vaccine deployment. And during the time that we have conducted our survey, only 64% actually accepted the vaccines and 18% are continued to be undecided. What are the lessons learned when we conducted this survey on vaccine acceptance? One is numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. And fun, another is research and development is vital, is a vital process. And finally, team players needs to carry them out. And to choose a team to work with critical thinkers, they have to be critical thinkers, they have to be dynamic, and they have to be responsive because they will always be our best asset. If you look at slides 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and this is about ramping up our campaign and to make people excited to get a job. And we are doing this through social media cards, through community outreaches, through town hall meetings, through community campaigns, and finally setting the clear process and guidelines. Let me emphasize that listening to public opinion and concerns about vaccination is the first step to anticipating a potential crisis. It will always form the basis for starting a dialogue, managing uncertainties, managing risk, and facilitating more efficient and targeted response. Now, let me go to systems thinking. And I'm referring to gaining a way of gaining confidence on the vaccine report through systems and establishing systems and the use of technology. It zeroes on how the different parts of a system interrelate and how systems work within the context of other larger systems. Let me show you a slide on how we address health human resource, how we use technology and how reliable vaccine supply and to ensure that we have the vaccine infrastructure in carrying out our program. Systems thinking would connect its elements together to address a systems issues or systems issues. Leadership would be very critical as they say, only a bad sailor blames the wind. And finally, let me talk about speed. And I would say speed is the key. Viruses doesn't know any calendar or events. The faster we vaccine, the faster we protect our people. Hesitancy comes when, they, when we take time giving what is due our people. We can let people wait. If we let them, they will have all the time to see the flaws of the system. Now, before I end, let me share with you this special quotation. It is the call to action to all of us to put our acts together, to put our economy back, to build back better as a city, and to build back better as a nation. Maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. Mabuhay po kayo. Magalong. Up next is the question and answer portion. But before that, here is my second question for our contest this morning. The question is, how many years and months of service did ben Mayor Benjamin Magalong render at the Philippine National Police? How many years and months of service did Mayor Benjamin Magalong render at the Philippine National Police? Don't forget to like the Facebook page of Philippines Graphic before you send your answers via PM. We are looking for the first two winners. Let us proceed to the question and 
answer portion. Can I call back on stage? Uh, Mayor Magalong, si Ma'am Chuchay, si Sir Ding of Paranaque. I think Dr. Herbosa will be coming back. That he'll be coming back. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll just wait for Dr. Herbosa to come come back. Uh, would you like to ask the first question, ma'am, or ako naman? I'd like to ask Mayor Magalong, sir. Um, we keep uh, hearing reports at Business New York of problems in certain localities that uh, that don't really pertain to vaccine hesitancy, but more of a problem of communications. And then um, I was struck by your by the system you set up in Bagu. And I would like to ask, if, do you have uh, any best practice that you could share with other LGUs where it seems the problem of um, the, the, the gap between the number of people who sign up for vaccination and the number of people who do show up when it's time for them to be vaccinated is very wide. And sometimes the people we interview, they only say because they get a very short notification period from the uh, the LG or the barangay. They said, I signed up, but they only told me early this morning or late last night that I'm supposed to show up already. So it's not really sometimes a problem of uh, hesitancy as a problem of maybe convenience, practicality, or time management. Would you have some uh, best practices to share with the LGUs, the other LGUs? Sir, nakamute kayo. Sir. Yeah, thank you very much, Ma'am Lourdes. First of all, I would like to inform you na hindi, hindi actually a best practice na talagang exclusive ng Baguio City. To be able to address this vaccine hesitancy, we do tinatawag nating town hall meeting. Ginagawa namin yung town hall meeting face-to-face, -face, especially sa hospitals, with a limited number of groups. And at the same time, we do it uh, we do it through a virtual meeting. Second is we're using technology. Again, we're using technology. It's something indispensable, especially in the scheduling of vaccines. And each vaccine usually receives the, the message uh, three days before or two days before the actual um, vaccination. Naka-state na rin doon kung saan sa pupunta, anong oras sa pupunta. Kasi the worst thing that we can do to our vaccines is to line them up, make them line up for hours. And it's something uh, inevitable, you know? something inevitable, especially kung walang proper scheduling. But what we're doing is we make sure that based on our experience and looking at the uh, time and motion study that we conducted and continuously conduct to improve further our system, talagang, we make sure na talagang uh, when they arrive, it would just take them about siguro mga one hour lang, 30 minutes to about two hours. Two hours na siguro is something na hindi na, uh, hindi na uncomfortable sa ating mga vaccines. Third is, Another is through our timing motion study. Binago namin yung setup ng DOH. Ginawa namin yung first three steps na nagiging redundant. Ginawa na lang namin isang step. That way, we were able to reduce it from 18 minutes to 15, or 15 to 18 minutes. Kasi may range lagi yan. So only 7 to 9 minutes. So ganun namin ginagawa yung aming sistema. And uh, as I've said, uh, you know, uh, making people feel comfortable during the vaccination program or the actual vaccine, making them, uh, you know, line up for only, you know, a few minutes or several minutes or just a few hours. You no, know, we incentivize them, we encourage them to go to the uh, vaccination center. Dahil alam nila na hindi ba ano especially if they are working people. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Uh, Sir, I have a question for Mr. Soriano. Can you tell us more about your uh, the house to house that you're doing? The sub that you are. I understand you're going around the subdivisions to do the vaccination. How do you go about that, sir? And who are the personnel do you deploy for that? 
Uh, thank you. That is a good question. And uh, we are indeed happy that uh, we come across the mayor decided with this plan for going into what we call the mobile vaccination and then the the home service type of vaccine, especially for the, the Sinovac and uh, and uh, AstraZeneca. The, we, we created teams for this one, utilizing our doctors and nurses from uh, the city health office and then the hospital ng Paranaque. There is a what we call a pre-registration or pre-name uh, submitted to us. And then as soon as we have this one, especially for our senior citizens and, and, and disabled, uh, differently abled uh, persons that who wish to be vaccinated, instead of uh, telling them to come to our vaccination, mega vaccination places in the city, we instead go to them so that we can cater to them and speed up the process. All of this, uh, uh, the only thing that we need for them is for them to submit to us the names, the address, and the contact person. And in a matter of the, a maximum of three days, we go to them and uh, uh, administer the, the vaccination uh, uh, effort, uh, actual vaccination to them. That's it that we're going to do, that we're doing actually. Okay. Uh, how is the re reception to the vaccine so far, sir? I mean, well, yeah. Yeah, when it comes the to the brands. Yeah, uh, again, uh, this is very unique in our city because the the demand for vaccination, for vaccine to our people are overwhelming. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, almost daily, as early as 6 o'clock or 6.30 in the morning, line queuing of people in our vaccination sites are uh, in the magnitude of, uh, sabi nga namin, talagang nagkakabigla. And this is a good and a welcome uh, uh, optimum uh, opportunity for our people and to us also that uh, indeed we see to our people that the demand for them para sa akin wala pong epektong hesitancy dito sa amin lahat to halos ay talagang they are clamoring for them to be vaccinated halos naguunahan na ho and then just uh, about uh, uh, yesterday nalaman na po namin na even yung mga barangays po natin they are utilizing their own people mga groupings so that uh, they can proceed to our vaccination places and for them to be inoculated agad-agad. At ito ang magandang pangitain. Sabi nga natin dito, uh, what we need are only the, the, the continuing supply of our vaccine so that we can uh, immediately administer to them. And if there is a need for us to go to our different barangay, the 16 barangays in the city, then we will do it. Only on only na na makover natin lahat ng vaccines na na nasa atin as may may distribute na sa atin or ma may deliver na yung mga binili natin then we will immediately do it. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Soriano. Uh, Mayor Magolong, can we ask how is your vaccination drive going there in Baguio City? How many percent have already been vaccinated? Okay, uh, so far we were area already able to vaccinate around 83,000 okay. 83,000 uh, people, uh, mostly A1 to A3. And then we have a certain percentage covering A5 because we were able to acquire vaccines uh, provided for by COVAX. Dito kasi sa Baguio, uh, we are only one of the very few LGUs na dito, especially dito sa Northern Luzon na naka, that invested early on cold storage facility, especially yung ultra cold storage. Kaya nung tinanong ng national government, kung ilan ba yung sino ba mga LGUs na merong ganitong class facility, immediately they saw Baguio dito sa Northern Luzon. Kaya bulk nung Pfizer na punta sa amin. And that's the reason why we were able to fast track also our vaccination. Out of the 82,000 or 83,000 that I mentioned, almost 46% of that are were uh, uh, had taken their second dose. So, tuli tuli pa rin namin, uh, tuli tuli pa rin ang uh, uh, vaccination and we're hoping to hit about 6,000 uh, vaccines a day uh, with uh, four, four uh, uh, vaccination centers. We intend to increase it once we have, uh, we receive the vaccines that we have procured from AstraZeneca, a total of 390 or 380,000 vaccines or doses were ordered from AstraZeneca. Unfortunately, merong Mayroong delay and uh, you know, uh, minsan napuprostate kami that for the month of July, uh, June, uh, July 11,000 lang ang darating. For the month of August, 
18,000 lang ang darating. And to think na 380,000 yung aming in order. Kaya kumisan, you know, it's very, very frustrating din. Kaya we have, we're heavily reliant now on the vaccines that are being provided by the national government and COVA. Okay. Did they give any reason why, sir, there is such a delay in the delivery? Is it because of production? It, it's it's actually a production issue according to AstraZeneca. Uh, ang AstraZeneca naman namin is, is not coming from India or coming from Europe. It's coming from Thailand. Oh. So, siguro maraming orders din. Kaya siguro prorated. Uh, kung ano yung matanggap natin, ipoprorata dun sa, kuan, sa 39 LGUs that uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, ordered for that vaccine. Uh, so, ganun lagi. Every month, meron darating, prorata na lang, prorated ang distribution sa mga 39 LGUs. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, 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 Mr. Soriano, can you tell us more about how are the vaccination rates there in Baranaque? Uh, uh, I say in my... Uh, my uh, in my uh, uh, statement uh, in behalf of the mayor, we are now averaging about more than 5,000 daily. So with the opening of our five mega vaccination sites, namely Ayala Mall, both the, 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 the second and the fifth floor, the SMDF, ISM Sukat, and ISM uh, Bikutan, we are targeting more than 6,000 or about 7,000 daily. Uh, excluding, <coughs> excuse me, excluding our mobile vaccination that we undertake down to the barangay and then the the catering for home servicing for our senior citizen and and uh, and uh, disabled persons so that's that that's the that's the scenario right now so in other words as i have said the the prospect for arriving at herd immunity as early as uh, well, this is dependent on the arrival of our vaccines to our city, probably about August, uh, September, August, or October for that matter. Then uh, we can simply say, in uh, God willing, that uh, in our city, the, the prospect of herd immunity is indeed possible. How about your COVID-19 cases there, sir, in Paranaque? Are they increasing? Are they decreasing? Uh, well, uh, th th we have a good, a good, uh, a good uh, uh, result for decreasing of our of our COVID cases in the city. As a matter of fact, we have uh, one or two barangays now that are zero. But unfortunately, well, the record shows that we have now what we call uh, kami, contaminated na tayo ng Delta variant in one uh, one one area in uh, in 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 barangay san isidro which is a big barangay but uh, the if the immediate intervention that uh, we do we immediately do the lockdown uh, is starting today is starting today and all those that uh, uh that got positive got positive for for delta variant immediately he was she was extracted a an ofw mm -hmm. and then put in an isolation together with the families of uh, the ofw uh, uh, patient and then uh, just uh, yesterday within that area there were very uh, uh, saturated uh, contact tracing that we do and then uh, uh, meron yata na positive kahapon na tatlo we are now checking uh, ch checking on it whether or not it, the, the it, it is the variant or the, the, the ordinary uh, COVID uh, 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 virus that uh, got it to them so the intervention with our city again immediately we lock down po natin the area uh where where the the that delta variant uh, positive case uh, resulted in barangay san isidro thank you so much sir i just have one question for mayor magalong sir um uh, Secretary Berna Romulo Puyat um, said that they, they they really love it hard to have the tourism uh, workers included among the A4 frontliners. Uh, since Baguio is considered uh, one of our best uh, tourism hubs, and 
you're having, you said, some problems in the supply. Uh, they're not arriving as fast as you want, the, the procured vaccines. Is that impacting on the the phase uh, recovery or the phase reopening of some of your uh, tourist-related establishments? Thank you, Ma'am Lourdes. Definitely, uh, definitely it will impact uh, our schedule on um, our recovery, especially on the opening of our full, full opening of our economy, especially our tourism industry. Uh, we were expecting when we procured the, the AstraZeneca vaccine, we were expecting that this will be delivered sometime in August, September. So we're ready. We're, we have uh, prepared about 85 vaccination teams uh, to comprise the uh, six vaccination centers in the entire city. Kaya lang, nagkaroon nga ng delay. And uh, as I've said, uh, it's a bit frustrating that we cannot do anything about it. The supply issue is a productive issue. Um, siguro, uh, the way we see it now, uh, will probably be delayed by as much as about three months. We were hoping that we'd be able to um, you know, carry out some of our grand, uh, grand uh, plans, uh, tourism plans, this, this fourth quarter of of this year, but because of this this uh, delayed delivery of uh, the vaccines that we ordered, most probably, but the delay on three months, so we're going probably to be able to carry out some of the activities in the first quarter of next year. Sad naman, sir. Ma, di ba a lot of people were saying, hopefully by Christmas, you know, uh, cities like yours could be able to Post more uh, reunions, more activities. So that's yes. out we for were, now. Yes, Ma'am Lourdes, we were, we were very optimistic and we were very enthusiastic also in opening our economy. Just unfortunate that we have this we have this problem, and then uh, here comes the Delta variant. You know, it's something inevitable. You know? we, we, a matter of time, we're going to get hit with the Delta variant cannot prevent it. I don't think we will be able to prevent it. And uh, we have to prepare for it. And that would again significantly delay the opening, fully opening of our economy. And so far as I'm talking only on uh, so far as Baguio is concerned. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mandu. Okay. Do we have any, any more questions, Ma? Okay, can I? Uh, okay. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Soriano and Mayor Benji for entertaining our questions and for joining us during this webinar. We really appreciate you sharing our, your time with us. Maraming salamat din po for having us. Thank you po. Thank you. Maraming salamat din po. Sa ngalan po natin, Mayor Edwin Olivares, maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, Mayor. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you for all for all of you for taking part in this webinar. To formally close this webinar, may I call on Dr. Rosarita Shasoko, the Executive Director of PIAP Cares Foundation, to give the closing remarks. Good morning. The PIAP Cares Foundation is deeply moved and inspired by co the conversation we had this morning. Thank you. Since our founding in 2003, it has been our commitment to be in the forefront of efforts to make a difference in the lives of the Filipinos through various medicine access initiatives, humanitarian missions and health information and education campaigns in geographic areas affected by conflicts, health outbreaks and disasters. This time, however, the public health emergency is not just confined in one geographic area. It is a global pandemic that has also hit hard fellow Filipinos and the country's economy. The conduct of this forum is aligned with our mandate to increase access in times of emergencies. Indeed, access to the right information at the right time will help us respond to vaccine hesitancy because it impacts the people and the progress of the nation. We are grateful to our speakers not only for being part of the forum, but also for their tireless efforts to make the country and everyone safe. We thank Secretary Cardito Galvez Jr., 
Special Advisor Dr. Chidora Herbosa, and Secretary Silvestre Bellio III, who provided national government directions as we move to protect our priority groups and our economic frontliners. Our thanks also goes to our frontliner from the DOH, Dr. Beverly Ho, who is leading a team that is helping give the people factual and verified information during this time of health infodemic. And to our governance frontliners, Metropolitan Manila Development Authority Chairman, Mr. Benhar Abalos, Metro Manila Council Chairman and Paranaque City Mayor, Edwin Olivares, and City Administrator, Mr. Fernando Soriano, Baguio City Mayor, Benjamin Magalong, Dagupan City Mayor, Brian Lim, Mataan Governor Albert Garcia, Bulacan Governor Daniel Fernando, and Pasay City Mayor Imelda Calixto Rubiano, we get inspiration from your determination to make your constituents free from this pandemic. Before we conclude this webinar, allow me to reiterate the fact that one, vaccines are safe. Ang bakuna po ay ligtas. Patient safety is the priority when it comes to the research and development of every vaccine. Vaccine makers must follow very strict scientific and health authority processes to bring a new vaccine to the people. Second, vaccines work. Ang bakuna po ay mabisa. All of the authorized COVID-19 vaccines go beyond the regulator's minimum efficacy level, which protects the vaccinated from this fatal virus. Third, vaccines are not the only way to stop the virus but they are our best chance of returning to normal. Ang bakuna po ay isa sa mga pangunahing paraan upang tayo ay makabalik sa ating normal na buhay. The more people who get COVID-19 vaccines, the more chances for us to protect our communities from the rise of various variants. The more of us who get vaccinated will also aid at lowering the number of COVID-related hospitalizations and deaths and helping to shield our health systems. If more people are protected, it will allow individuals, families, communities, and businesses to get back to normal. The Behab Cares Foundation will closely collaborate with all of you because partnerships are the only way forward. In our partnerships, we shall be leveraging on our experience in preparing for and responding to public health emergencies. It is our honor to be co-organizing this forum with the Philippines Graphic, the Business Mirror, the Department of Health, Department of Labor and Employment, and the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, and our members Beringer Ingelheim, Mark Sharp and Dome, and Novartis. Mula po sa Pihap Cares Foundation, maraming salamat at manatili po sana ang bawat isa sa atin na malusog at ligtas. Maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, Dr. Rory, for your closing remarks. Before we say goodbye, let me announce the winners of our contest. Just get the winners, huh? Here we are. Okay. Question number one is, what department did Secretary Sylvester Bellio III head during the time of Presidents Corazon C. Aquino and Fidel V. Ramos? The answer is the Department of Justice. And the winners are Eli G. Guevara and the administrator of the Sangguniang Barangay, Langkiwa. Okay. For the second question, how many years and months of service did Mayor Benjamin Magalong render at the Philippine National Police? The answer is 38 years and 8 months. And the winners are Vela Krishma and Dennis Romerick Gabriel Tuason. Congratulations to all of you. We will get in touch with you so that we can arrange the delivery of your prizes. Thank you to our partners, P Up Cares Foundation the Department of Health, Beringer Ingelheim, MSD, Novartis, Brenton International Ven Venture Manufacturing Corporation, Brent Gas, Super Calan Gas, Liquid Gas, Sharp, Barangay Magallanes, Barangay Silang of Mandaluyong, ALC Media Group, ALC Group of Companies, 
Thank you to Marian Pausanos, Dr. Rory Shasoko, Dennis Tuazon, Alan Millar, June Alano, Rhea Rivera, Mario Urutia. Thank you, Boss Anton, Mam Ma Saiki, Mam Ma Chai, to the production team of Ed and Briggs. Thank you to the Philippines graphic team, Shaira, Dennis, Leia, Carlo, Charm, Queenie, Maribel, April. To the Business Mirror sales team, led by Alduin, Edwin, Bim, Sa, Max, Jonathan, Heidi, Maynard, Boyet, Anna, Millet. To the Special Projects team of Leoni, Annie, and Leo, and of course to Lorraine. Again, this has been Anne Ruth De La Cruz, and join me again on June 30, Wednesday at 2 p.m., where we will discuss Ben's health. Are you man enough? Good day to everyone. Because every household needs an LPG that can keep up with a bossing ng kusina. We bring you Brentgas, the LPG specialist at your service, on your demand. 
experienced service na may malasakit whenever you order and enjoy dependable delivery service, consistent product quality, and tank integrity. BrentGas also offers opportunities to OFWs and Filipino entrepreneurs to enrich their lives through its competitive franchise offer. BrentGas, LPG specialists at your service. For any LPG-related concerns or franchise, call or visit your nearest BrentGas store or branch. A revolution in air purifying. An air purifier that gives two way of air purifying system. Passive filtration through filters. How does each filter work? Filter Deodorizing Filter HEPA Filter filtration through plasma cluster ions. This one-of-a-kind sharp technology able to release positive and negative ions, same ions that occur in nature. It deactivates airborne mold and suppresses activity of adhering viruses, bacteria and allergen through the dispersed ions in the air. These ions actively attach and break down the air pollutants. Faster airflow at 20 degree angle. Collects dust at lower levels in the room for more effective cleaning. Plasma cluster can reduce static electricity and it can thus prevent dust from attaching to walls and other surfaces. <laughs>